Hi everyone, and welcome back to the wonderful world of Cal2. In the following sections, we'll be discussing the integration of powers of trigonometric functions. In this particular video, we'll look at case 1, which is odd powers of cosine. Why would we use powers of a trigonometric function to perform our integration? Well, as usual, I'm assuming we've recognized that our integral is not in a basic form. Substitutions and integration by parts have failed. And no algebraic methods have successfully solved the integral. Odd powers of cosine can be recognized simply by having a cosine with an odd degree. It can be on its own or combined with a sine function. So how does this work? Well, we'll discuss the procedure to follow by using cos cube of x as an example. First and foremost, we will take one of the cos x terms and move it in order to associate it to the dx. Basically, we're just breaking up the three powers of cosine into cos squared and cos of x along with the dx. In step two, we're going to use the identity cos squared x plus sine squared x equals one to replace all remaining cos squares by one minus sine squared. Therefore, our new integral will look like 1 minus sine squared times cos of x dx. Again, the cos x dx term that we have regrouped are there to stay for a while. In step 3, we will apply the substitution u equals sine of x with du equals cos of x dx. Those are the terms that we took care of placing together. Therefore, we are now going to be integrating 1 minus sine squared x, cos of x dx, as functions of u instead, 1 minus u squared. Finally, you can complete the antiderivative by using expansion, or the power rule, or splitting the numerator, and then returning to x. In our example, we simply have powers of u and can integrate each term directly. A plus k is added for generality. And then, since every u stands for sine of x, we can return to variable x itself. If we are dealing with a definite integral, the bounds can be adapted as you go through with the substitution. Here's a odd cosine function with a degree of 5, and it is accompanied by an even power of sine. Our procedure says to, first of all, move one of the cos x terms aside and to associate it to the dx. Our second step is to replace all cos squares that remain into 1 minus sine squared. Notice that cos squares are hiding inside cos to the power 4. And therefore, cos squared will become 1 minus sine squared. If you were to let u at this stage replace sine of x, then du will be cos of x dx, which are the terms associated on the right-hand side. So let u equal sine of x, and let du be cos of x dx. Simultaneously, we could change the bounds. A bound of x equals 0 means that u equals sine of 0 is 0 as well. The upper bound, pi over 6, means that the corresponding value of u is sine of pi over 6, which is a half. Now the entire integral can be re-expressed in terms of u as well as bounds of u. Our last step says to use expansion in order to integrate the different terms. So we expand the powers of u and 
apply the power rule to each of these different terms. The rest is the F is uh, defined by FTC part two, which is to replace the upper and lower bounds into the integral. And again, we succeed.